All right, welcome back to another episode of Doc Talk West Virginia. Thank you all for joining me today. Very, very excited. Joining me today, Eric Cormack, winner of the 2019 KBF Southeast Regional at Santee Cooper, South Carolina. That was just this last week in the 23rd of February. Eric, thank you so much for joining me, buddy. Appreciate your time today and, and working us in today. Hey, well, Shane, I appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. Well, man, that's great. Great. Congrats on the win. I think everyone uh, from West Virginia or anyone that knows you is super ecstatic for you, man. You earned it, obviously, and you went down and absolutely smashed them, dude. And uh, I, I don't think there's anybody that uh, isn't excited for you, man, other than the guys you just absolutely dumped down there. It might be a little bittersweet for them, but hey, man, for you, sweet deal, man. Great first win, opening tournament of the season. Uh, that's exciting. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate it, Shane. It is, man. I'm I'm still a little bit, you know. I don't know that it's sunk in completely. I mean, I'm just as you're saying that, you know, it's just a big grin getting on my face because it's just I don't know. It's been a long road, and and uh, man, I it just I don't know what to say right now. Well, man, I mean, for uh, we'll we'll rewind just a little bit for the ones that don't. No, Eric Cormack, give us a little little history, man. I know uh, I've read through your bio personally on uh, Tourney X, and uh, for the ones that don't know, you are originally from West Virginia, but give us a little background on you, man. How'd you, how'd you get involved in, in the kayak fishing to start? Uh, man, the kayak fishing is, it, it's, i tell you what, about three years now, what was it, the end of 2015, just going through a, a I guess, a, switching paths in my life and uh was out of state i was living up in maryland and uh just happened to cross this thing on on craigslist this guy selling two boats and two kayaks and you know i mean i guess prior to that i i started guiding rafts um for a company called classics river runners back in 92 or 93 um train jumped on with them you know so i've been in inflatable kayaks for you know, for quite a while. And, you know, we always tagged along fishing poles and on like upper new trips or whatever and would fish. And, and, uh, you know, I've been out of the whitewater scene for a while, lived out of state. Like I said, my roads are past and I've switched a little bit and found two packs, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, purchase both and get a little bit of a discount from a fella. And I bought both of them and literally I just, man I, I it just brought back a lot of memories and you know growing up fishing in the state i mean i could do both and something that was rigged for it and it just sort of helped me get my mind straight um and focused again at that point in time and and i mean every i did my first tournament with um river bassin um drew gregory they had a tournament up there in uh pennsylvania on the susquehanna right. river tournament you know and rivers being my thing you know i mean that's uh and i did that one and i was hooked i mean i literally the the fish through the winter on the shenandoah and the potomac moved back um home shortly um then went up to ohio for a while and i think i did 14 or 15 tournaments that first year for the river bassin series and then you know never fished a lake in my life and then went to a kbf seminar down in florida and uh man i just like I said i've been hooked i uh, just it has been you know it's it's been a good thing for me yeah yeah and i think that is i mean even for me uh we've talked a lot and uh even if if, if you talk to any any man man woman child anyone that's ever got involved in kayak fishing especially kayak bass fishing as far as tournaments yeah, I think that's a, a common consensus across the board is, man, when, once you get into that and give it a shot and a try, uh, it, it's kind of mind-blowing how different it is than some other forms of tournament fishing and how it truly hooks you, man. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a different kind of uh, tournament style of tournament fishing. 
And it does. It absolutely grabs you. I mean, to, to say that you're one with nature when you're out there in a plastic boat floating and you're awful small and you're uh, going after those bass way back in the skinny water or, or in this case, in your big wind on some big giant water. Uh, man, it's, it's, it's something that until you get out there, you really don't know. Uh, what what it's like and what you're missing. So uh, I totally understand exactly where you're coming from with that. And the and the ones that don't, I would highly recommend trying it because uh, it, it's it can be life changing. And and there's proof of that for a lot of people too. Well, so it's that's that's exciting. But before we get into a full recap of what you want to share with us about your win, I want to go over a few stats for the ones that don't know Eric Cormack. And I looked through tourneyx.com, and anyone can get on here and look up angler profiles and find this information. But it, it some things stood out to me, and I'm just going to go over a few for you, man. Let me break it down. So for the ones that don't know, we're going to go uh, straight into some, some uh, stats. 68 total tournaments you fished, and this is only on tourneyx for the ones that don't know. This is uh, generally where most... All tournaments are scored and where your fish are uploaded to. So I do know you have fished some other ones that wouldn't be on this list. But as far as the Tourney X uh, ran tournament, 68 total tournaments. And this is only from 2016, I saw, probably mid-2016 when you got into it. Damn. Two, <laughs> 248 fish verified, a total length of fish uploaded three thousand seven hundred and fifteen inches man <laughs> i haven't got you know, this is my wife has these stats <laughs> that's a lot of time away from home man. that's a lot of time away from home but with this something that might not sound uh crazy to some but as a kayak angler the ones that you, you can relate to it an average length of just under 15 inches a 15 inch average and that is doesn't sound like a lot to maybe some but when you break down that many tournaments and have an average length of 15 inches and if you look back through tournament results that easily will cash you a check in a lot of tournaments especially here throughout the state just because it man it's hard to stack up and get on those big fish so that is an extremely impressive number and not only that i'll break it down even further for you and everyone listening how about 16 top 20s, 16 top 10s. In that top 10, seven top fives, two second places, and three first place finishes. Those are some pretty impressive numbers, man, for knowing how far you've traveled. And we're talking uh, could be national championship in Kentucky Lake, could be up in PA on some smally waters uh, throughout West Virginia. And as you said, and this doesn't even go into the team stats. You know, it looks like you've had five team events that are actually on Tourney X. And those five team events, four top tens, and one of them is a first place finish out of the out of the ten. And you're worse than that was a 21st. Dude, that's absolutely impressive numbers. I, I got to say, got hats off to you, man. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I, I honestly did not realize it. I mean, it's something. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I've never considered myself like that or, or broke down the numbers, but uh, yeah, I'm just sort of sitting here going, damn. Yeah. I, you know, well, that don't sound too bad. Well, I don't here, to hear it from somebody else's. Name, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's an even more impressive number. And for the ones that don't know, and, and I know you just hit on it just a few minutes ago, you are what I consider a river rat, you know, grew up on the new river, guided, Spent a ton of time on the water. You know how to read water and a little tidbit off topic, but this guy absolutely has shown, you have shown a ton of people, taught a bunch of people how to read water, how to safely navigate rough water. And that, sir, is huge. You constantly give back and help people out. And that is a, that is a big, big thing that uh, you, know, you should be proud of. And I know you are, but New River Stats. Here you go. I broke this down a little bit. Eight new river events that i could find on tourney x and in those eight events you had one top 25 two top 20s 
four top tens, and out of those top tens, you had three top five finishes and a, uh, your one second place finish. And your worst, absolutely worst, out of those tournaments was a forty second place. And if 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 the, if the people listening don't know, these New River events generally average well over a hundred people. Dude, these, if that doesn't tell you you are an absolute stick on the new river, I can't tell you what will. If that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Uh, yeah, I, that's, I love the river. I mean, the new river is my home. I've spent a lot of time there. Um, again, I didn't realize it was it, just that. <laughs> like that. I mean, well, and, and, you know, that's something we don't really look at, you know, and I think, uh, uh, for the true passion of kayak fishing and kayak tournament fishing and tournament fishing in general, you know, we, we do these things cause we enjoy them and we love it or we wouldn't do it. It's, it's for all of us competing. It's generally not about the money. Uh, we spend a lot more than what we ever win, but oh. when you do stack up some good numbers and you start cashing a few checks, you know, I mean, that's never a bad thing to, to <laughs> add into the mix. Not at all. I mean, hell, I want you to print that out and start throwing it out to some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work you up. Good, I'll work you up a resume, man. How about that? <laughs> that, that, that sounds great, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm really Shane. I just I don't know what to say. I'm just like, holy cow, dude. I never like I said I've never broke it down and looked at it. You know, right. I think, I, you know, you go at the end of each tournament with these things and go, man, you know, I think I could have done better. I could have done better. What went wrong? What went right? You know, and I, I don't you know, I look at the past like conditions and I look at not I can honestly say never where I placed. You know, I, it's in always in the back of my mind, but I'm I'm just sort of like, dag on, man. That's yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It sounds damn good on paper, man. <laughs> hey, and that's what most people are concerned about: how it looks like on paper, right? So there that's uh, hey, man, it looks good. <laughs> and not only does it look good on paper, those are stats. You know, th these are true stats. This is what you're doing out there, and uh, congrats on that, man. I mean, you have uh, just to be doing it such a short time, uh, not. You know, that's not your only experience. You've been fishing for years, but to when you really break it down, that is impressive. But with that, let's go right into Santee, man. I mean, Santee, I, I, like you said, you, you're still processing the win. And I know the outpouring and support's been great. Uh, the mm. kayak fishing community is huge. And uh, it's, it's, it's something that you're not used to seeing when you go up, you win a tournament and every guy standing around pats you on the back, shakes your hand, congratulates you. And that is what it's all about. But uh, man, give us a, give us a breakdown. You headed down to Santee on what? Uh, Friday or you got on the water Friday? Yeah, yeah, we left Thursday afternoon. Uh, I, I introduced the fella um, that that I've been I've known for a long time since high school. Anyway, junior high or high school, and a fellow by the name of Joe Gill. We worked together. I got him into kayak fishing last year. I mean, he shot me a message one day. He said, "Man, I, I've got a couple kayaks, but never spent any time really on them on the river. You know, you want to head out one day, and you know, it's catching up, long lost friend kind of thing, and." You know, I got him into it this year. He signed up for KBF, and he's going to sign up for all the state, you know, trails. And I sort of got a, a partner with it. And uh, anyway, and, and then uh, Greg Harper jumped on and uh, headed down with us. Um, took uh, Joe's better half and my better half, which is, you know, her first tournament. Um, right. And uh, to tag along. Um, and anyway, yeah, I got down there Thursday evening, got settled in to a nice, you know, nice place to stay over there in Pikeville. And. Thursday morning headed out and uh, man, it, it Santee. I mean, a little bit of past on it. I love it. I've been this. This was my third, I think, third or fourth time there. Um, first time I, I fished it um, with, for a KBF tournament. Did fairly well. Again, I was new. I've never fished a lake in you know in a big boat. Never been in a big boat, but never fished a lake until. Um, the end of 2016, maybe either 15 or 16, I forget. And then, uh, so that was like one of my first big lake tournaments. And man, I caught some nice fish, including a big, and then I caught a big old blue heron on that trip. Um, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so and and then the next couple times, you know, I knew where I wanted to be. I fished well there last year um, for the open, um, the one that teammate um, Aleph won. 
Yeah. And uh, so I knew where I wanted to be. Um, but Friday, we wanted to check out some new areas. You know, it was a different time of year. I'd never been there this early. And uh, it had been either late. Um, I think May was last year. And the other time was maybe in July or August. And, I mean, it's a different fishery, I think, throughout all those times. Absolutely. Um, you know, just so massive. And the fish are doing different things. But hit a couple of spots. Friday just did not work well i mean the wind was good i mean it was it was whipping um getting out on a lake that size um i found fish at a new spot they were deep though and when i say deep i think between 20 and 25 feet off this ledge and i mean the wind was just whipping up some waves and i got uncomfortable i mean i have two you know two guys with me that one relatively new with Joe and Greg being experienced, you still, you start thinking what can happen. And, and that big water just makes me nervous. And, you know, I've run big water before, but you just start going, damn, you know, anything can happen. Well, yeah. Uh, and, and, and not to interrupt you, but I totally agree. Uh, and for the ones that's never been in a 14 foot or less uh, kayak, uh, or you might as well just say just a little uh, piece of plastic out there, you know, me being on Kentucky Lake and uh, seeing 20 plus mile an hour winds and that lake starts stacking up and <laughs> it gets to say it's it's nerve wracking would be an understatement. Uh, that's uh, I mean, you you get to the point to where you really start second guessing if you should even be out anywhere on the water because, uh, I mean, you, you start thinking about the worst that can happen. And that's a good thing. You know, it's the main things about being safe, but I totally can relate on and it's hard to stay on a spot. You find 20 fish and 25 foot of water you know, on big water like that. How do you stay on that? Uh, and that's extremely difficult on such a small boat that floats in less than two inches of water mostly. So I, I can totally relate. So, I mean, obviously tough practice day Friday, you go back and try to regroup. How, how do you mentally prepare when you when you were going into to tournament morning, you had to be a little bit rattled knowing that, you know, you didn't find anything super solid on Friday. Oh, yeah. I mean, it 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 was it was like, OK, we jumped in, fished another spot, uh, Utah Springs. I'd seen a lot of big bass there the year before. Missed three fish, small fish. Um, my buddy Joe. He put one in the boat, but there, there was no consistency. You know, Greg didn't didn't even get a bite, and you're just like, damn, you go home that night. And I've got to be honest, I didn't even think about it. You know, I, I knew right off the bat, well, we'll go back to where we where I fished last year. You yeah. know, and and honestly, it, with the wife being there, being worn out from the drive, worn out from all day fishing. You know, I haven't had a lot. Well, besides being boy, I haven't been on the water since. And you know, last fall was a slow fall for me i think i maybe fished four times you know in like four months and just work got caught up and i tell you what having my wife there and we just enjoyed ourselves and enjoyed you know being away from the kiddos and all <laughs> responsibility i did not even think about it all i said was guys we're going to go to you know that spot tomorrow i know there's fish here we just got to find them and man i tell you i and like I said, it's the first trip she's ever been with me. I slept like a champ. I woke up refreshed. Um, not a neg. I mean, it's probably one of my first times I didn't have a worried thought. And I don't know why, other than, you know, having somebody there you're comfortable with. I wasn't sleeping in my van on a ramp, you know, <laughs> crammed up, sitting there stressing about gear or anything else. And I uh, woke up. We made the decision. You know, I was like, guys, here we go. And, you know, we headed to Spears. Um, I think it's what's called Spears Landing set off. I told Greg and Joe, here's the deal. Here's where they were last year. I know they're going to be close. This cold front had come in. You know, I knew they had moved up some because of the warm spell we had, but I knew this cold stuff was going to push them back a little bit. And, um, man, and then it was just trying to figure them out. And the next four hours or five hours, I absolutely got my butt kicked. I mean, I – could not find a fish. I could not get a bite. The wind was still whipping the first two hours. Um, you know, I was, and I very rarely would say this, I was unprepared um, clothing-wise. You know, I was expecting warmer temperatures, so I was cold. Um, and then my gear, I just could not, like I had 
struggles with my with uh two of my you know two of my setups and then all of a sudden i don't know i said i'm going to do something different and i tied on a, a rapala slash bait and a little four inch slash bait and started working this flat and literally the first cast i hooked up and um with that first cast though and that hookup i lost it again because of gear problems you know tackle problems and uh did some rearranging switched some stuff um and i was getting that's the point i was getting frustrated and starting to go holy cow i'm going to get my butt handed to me you know does, and it's still early but the thing's going through your head yeah totally agree man yeah you when, when you get in that in that position like you said some gear failure i know you and i've talked uh you when you have some malfunctions in gear uh and what people don't realize in a kayak we're not stacking 15 rods where you have some backup you know you kind of go in with a you know, minimal amount of gear that you can pack uh every piece of gear adds weight uh to to your to your full setup so uh, what people don't realize we're not packing 15 rods you know a lot of guys it's five to eight rods so when you lose a couple whether it's real real malfunctions or, or some uh, rod breaks or what have you, that throws a huge wrench in the mix. Yeah, yeah. And then Greg pedals up out of nowhere, and he had dropped his phone, and which that sucked. You know, that just sort of goes, man, we are ha- – all. it's not just me. It's all of us. So, you know, it sort of goes, man, I mean, this is just not our day. But then on the other hand, you're going, okay, I'm not the only one having problems. Yep. And either sit and let it – tear you down and sit and focus on that or figure out what to do to make it right you know i knew i finally got a bike so i knew i put something together you know to so it's like okay so i adjusted um you know but i did decide to move i made the pedal to move um or you know pedaled out to a different spot then i finally hooked up and i i told those guys in the morning there's a you know deeper channel running through here it feeds off into these flat and these cypress trees and even though I told them that it's something I got frustrated and with being underdressed and, you know, not being comfortable on the water because I was cold and then having gear problems, I'd forgot about. And as soon as I jumped in there, it was like, I'm going to hit this row of trees off this channel, literally the first cast. Um, I'm throwing a stick bait up against some cypress. It hit the bottom. As soon as it did, the line got tight and took off. And then I was like, okay, so I've got two different places I've caught fish close to deeper water, um, and I'm getting an idea. And as soon as that happened, I literally I fished a couple more trees, had some more gear problems. Finally said, okay, switch these rods around or switch these reels, change my rod up a little bit, mix up my combos to what I need to fish these two presentations, which is a wacky rig and a jerk bait. Once I did that, then I headed over to where I needed to be, where I knew there was these areas lined up. And then it was, I didn't catch a lot of fish. Um, I missed a couple quality fish. I think, I, I honestly think I could have broke, you know, and Santee this year was my biggest ever single day at 94 and a quarter inches. I really think I could have had a hundred because I lost several quality fish and, um, but once I figured out, okay, this is where they are. This is what they're looking for. I got that pattern, switched up my combos to something dependable. I caught fish. And, I, you know, it was just, it wasn't a whole bunch, but it was, I put four more quality fish in the boat. And that's what your whole goal is, is to put five of them in the boat, you know, and I had one and I just needed those four more. And I think at 209 or 212, something like that, I caught my, my last one, which was I think 19 and three quarter. Yeah. And, and for the ones that don't realize kind of how that uh, translates, you know, a lot of us are used to you know, big boat tournaments where we're talking weight. We're talking, this event was a five fish limit. And like you said, it, it, you have to almost change your tactics up. If, if, someone has any experience in in a big boat tournament compared to a kayak tournament which is measured on length uh so i mean we could have the fattest 17 inch bass on the planet weighing in at four pounds but you're still only got a 17 inch fish sitting there so like you said a limit to to get your limit 
uh, and get it on the board is is a huge deal. You and I have both seen it. You go out, you got a five fish limit tournament. You you put four big fish on, on the board, even if they're twenty plus inch fish, which is kind of like that. You know, that's that holy grail we all hunt for. You know, those twenty inch <laughs> fish are, are are the big fish. Uh, and you stack five of those and put yourself over that 100 inch mark. That's you know that that's kind of a big deal. You don't see many guys cross that 100 inch mark. That's the kind of the holy grail, the unicorn of kayak fishing is what I'd like to call it. But with that being said, you put four 20 inchers in the boat, you know, for 80 inches, and you can't feel that fifth fifth fish. Somebody that caught a nice consistent limit's going to going to bust you out of that top spot almost every yeah. time. So that yeah. is an important deal. It is. I mean, just having five, and I can't tell you, four has cost me last year at the open. You know, I I was sitting pretty first day. Second day, I caught my personal best at 21 and a half. My next fish was 20 and either 20 or 20 and three quarter. My third fish was 18 and three quarter. And I, I did, you know, you look and how far was I out of the first, you know, out of winning this thing. I was two 12 inch fish out of winning. Right. And, and, you know, it's just like, damn, as good as I'm doing, I can't catch two more 12 inch fish. And it, it takes you from first place and $10,000 to 17th place and not a penny in your pocket, man. You know, you're actually in the hole 600 bucks for, you know, for the, for the week. So, well, absolutely. And and like we just said, a a limit 100% comes into play. I have, uh, personally, I I can agree with that and attest to that. I I have personally, uh, come short of a limit multiple times. Uh, (laughs) and sure enough, it's like, man, if I could have just put a legal catch in a 12 inch bass, I, you know, that cost me. And, And then you start, looking back and you know we've all lost fish off the board or you broke one off right by the boat and, and those things definitely come into play uh and, and like you said santee it looks like you got a pretty good history of santee you know you're talking three tournaments at santee last three years uh top 10 you know you're looking at a top 20 and we're talking out of 80 plus boats uh, uh last year and now this year 122 uh kayakers show up you pull the top spot, you win it all, and if you and if the ones listen haven't seen two thousand dollars top place prize contingency money adding up to another fifteen hundred if I'm correct from from contingency uh, money that you were uh, obviously enrolled in, so you earned that as well. That is a, a big payday that was one hundred percent earned. And not only I'm sure that is special to you, uh, but I think you had someone there for the first time that is extremely special to you that made it even sweeter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, Ken, being there the first time, I get shook up. That's okay. That's uh, okay, man. You know, I can, I can relate to that. Those times are special to us all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's been, the, you know, she's been 100% behind me. I mean, I've spent way too much money um, to start, but way too much time away from my family. Um, you know, I mean, I don't think a lot of people, I mean, obviously the kayaker world and their families are unique because, you know, a lot of a lot of wives and kids would not tolerate it, you know, right. and I've included the, the family in doing these trips and getting them out. You know, we camp a lot and we're going across country this summer for three weeks and, uh, you know, we try to do as much we can together, but I'm still, I'm gone a lot. You know, over the past couple of years, I've, I've spent more time out of state. I think last year between work out of town and, or the year before last, between work out of town and tournaments, I was home 22 weekends, you know, or, or like it was like 20 or 22 weekends all year. And so to have that support and her tolerate it for so long and then her to be able to be there, pretty damn cool yeah that's uh that that makes it even sweeter and and like you said man it's a it's a team effort for for everyone involved in tournament fishing it's time away from the family uh but it is what we what we enjoy uh to do we love to compete um and when you get to share that with somebody someone that close that uh that just sweetens the pot even even more so uh uh, you know that that's wonderful man yeah we're 
extremely, extremely as as a fellow angler, as a friend. Uh, I can't tell you how, how excited I am for you. I know you you are proud. You should be proud. And you have a ton of people down here uh, back home in West Virginia uh, that obviously was rooting you on. And uh, we are more than ecstatic for you, man, on your win. That's a heck of a way to start the season. I know you got a busy schedule uh, throughout the year uh, as far as tournament fishing. Um, so so we, we wish you the absolute best of luck for the rest of the year man and uh, uh like i said we'll be rooting for you man hey i appreciate it, shane um i do man I, it is going to be busy it definitely winning this one has changed <laughs> changed my schedule a little bit um and, and i did not even talk about that part but it was man i've been overwhelmed by the support um it's been it's been cool and i appreciate it well, awesome, man. Well, listen, uh, we appreciate your time. I appreciate your time taking time to do this interview with us. Uh, uh, you know, the main goal in Doc Talk uh, West Virginia is to recognize the anglers, uh, recognize the youth and what the state does to improve everything we have. Uh, we are a very, very tight knit community of anglers and tournament anglers. And we want to congratulate you again, my friend. Congrats on the win. We're looking forward to seeing what you have going on for the rest of 2019, and we'll be pulling for you, buddy. And hey, and I appreciate Shane. I, I, I love what you're doing with the Doc Talk, and uh, man, I keep it up. I mean, it's awesome. It's it's the kayaking is a huge, I think, thing that, that can bring people together. So much negative on social media and the news and then, you know, just knowing what's going on in West Virginia with our youth and I mean not just our youth, but watching families fall apart over so many different things and, and I tell you what, kayaking, kayak fishing, being outdoors, in the woods, on the water, whatever it is. I mean it's I, I truly believe it's a key to help a lot of a lot of folks out not just only in our state but every place I mean, absolutely every man out there. And, and the more we get of it you know the the more we get people into it the more we're going to get out of it and uh i mean it's important i mean you know like i said it it, it helped me rafting helped me the pack fishing you know it definitely kept me from going back down a road that you know that i could have easily went on years and years you know that i was on years and years ago it kept me you know focused and gave me something else to do and and uh it's huge it's huge for everybody it's huge for the businesses it's huge for the state it's huge for individuals and that's the most important part absolutely get get out in the outdoors uh like eric says get out in the outdoors i promise if you if you don't already if you do already spend more time out there uh, put the phones down enjoy your family enjoy your friends enjoy what not only this state has to offer but but the whole nation like you said you, you've spent a lot of time throughout the country and we are blessed to have amazing resources to enjoy that are free get out get involved enjoy what we have and that is 100 percent the main thing uh but thank you to each and every one of you listening today uh for another episode of doc talk west virginia thank you eric cormack congratulations again sir 2019 kbf southeast regional champion at santee cooper south carolina Congrats, buddy. I wish you the best of luck for 2019. Hey, man, I appreciate it, Shane. And hey, can I can I give one more shout out? That, Absolutely. You know, everybody knows how important my wife being there was, but to, uh, Mark and Andrew at Elevation, I, I, at Elevation Sports in Beckley, I owe them a ton. They have helped me out. Um, I couldn't be doing this at all without them. And uh, all my teammates at Elevation and, and uh, 412 Bait, I appreciate the hell out of it, guys. Well, absolutely, man. It takes a uh, it takes an army, and they picked a wonderful, wonderful angler in person to represent them and their teams. So, uh, with that, absolutely, man. Uh, you know that is well, well, well deserved on your part. And like you said, it takes a team, and uh, it's nice when you have some wonderful people behind you. You got it, Shane. Again, thanks, man, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, brother. It's the right thing. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it, man. All right, everybody out there, y'all take care. Wonderful.
right, thanks, man. Eric, man. That was awesome. I appreciate your time, dude. I'll edit all this up and uh, get this probably posted here just this evening. But, man, I appreciate it. I as always, if you enjoyed this interview and like to see more of Doc Talk West Virginia, please subscribe and hit that like button. Also hit that bell icon to be notified when a new video drops.